Welcome to another edition of Nation Watch. Today, 5th March 2023, a very important day for us in Guyana. Um, you'll hear some drums in the background from time to time. We are celebrating Ghana Day today. Tomorrow marks the 66th anniversary of um, Ghana's an independent nation, and as is usual celebrations are held here at Congress Place um, on Ghana Day. So you welcome, there's an open invitation to citizens to join us at Congress Place. The organizers have asked for a small contribution of $500 as you enter. So best wishes to Ghana and best wishes to the descendants, Guyanese descendants from Ghana on this very auspicious day in the life of independent Ghana. And then on Tuesday, we have Pagwa, a national celebration. And I take this opportunity to extend best wishes to all Guyanese, and in particular, our Hindus, Hindu brothers and sisters. Today, we're going to be discussing um, some of the excesses of the PPP dictatorial regime in Guyana. If we were to talk about the excesses of the PPP, we'll be here for months without a break. Joining me today to have this conversation is Mr. Aubrey C. Norton, leader of the opposition and leader of the People's National Congress Reform. Welcome, Mr. Norton, to another edition of Nation One. Thanks for having me, um, Marvin, and permit me to also rest, put on records that Ghana Day is tomorrow and the PNC are remembers the independence of Ghana. On Tuesday, like you said, it's Pagwa, and we want to say to the Hindu community and to all Guyanese, celebrate Pagwa in the true meaning of the festival. Thank you very much, Mr. Norton, for those opening remarks. It is the view of many Guyanese that the citizens of this country who are perceived not to be supporters of the People's Progressive Party regime are under attack. We recall the incidents of the demolition of homes in Linden. We recall the forced removal of persons at Independence Boulevard. We recall the agony of the people of Cainview in Mocha, lost livestock, other assets and their homes were destroyed um, in the plain view of the public, in the plain view of the world. We recall the vendors at New Market Street who were attacked. Forcibly, forcible attempts were made to remove them. And then the People's Progressive Party's agents on the police guard came back by night and removed them. People of this country are of the firm view that these are deliberate attacks against citizens who are perceived not to be supporters of the People's Progressive Party. What are your views on this matter? Well, it is clear that it is the intention of the government to destroy all those who they perceive not to support them. Um, it should be pointed out that a large amount of them are Afro-Guyanese, but we have cases of Indo-Guyanese, of indigenous peoples, who once they are not supportive of the People's Progressive Party, then they go down that route. You only have to look to see how they deal with members and supporters of their party. And in those cases, they will always move towards negotiation. They will always engage them. I saw recently an attempt at a protest at Rose Hall, and the police intervene, etc., with the aim of solving it. When it comes to those that are not supportive of the PPP, whenever you hear about the police, it is brute force and ignorance, as you can see from the situation at, that you outlined, and the more recent being that in Letem. And so it is obvious to us that the regime doesn't believe in democracy, 
and that they are doing everything to ensure they destroy all those who they perceive not to be supportive of their position. There's a, a different, there's an attack of a different nature which is happening at the same time. In the National Assembly of the Parliament of Guyana, new rules emerge progressively with the speaker causing to be included among a list of unparliamentary words, words that can only be used to describe this regime. Corruption is, is ruled out. And this uh, government, as they style themselves, are steeped in corruption. All of these new words that are emerging Clearly, this is clearly an indication where the speaker is acting on directives from the leaders of this regime to gag opposition members of parliament. And it goes even deeper to, for example, in region four, where the ARIO, in the plain view of the public, it's on video, um, physically wrestled the microphone away from the elected leader of the region, the Regional Democratic Council chairman. That has resulted in police reports being made, but you yourself made police reports in the Namstel about the assault on a citizen who was believed to be part of your entourage by an agent of the PVP, and nothing has come of that yet, and several months have passed. Now in Region 10, today I believe is the Mashramani celebrations in, in Region 10, and the REO, Mr. Dwight John, has made it clear that he has no money to fund today's activities because he utilized all of the money in bringing people to the Georgetown Mashramani um, celebrations. Whereas the vote with respect to Mash celebrations in Region 10, the vote is specific to Region 10 activities. So this is another means by which the People's Progressive Party clearly is attacking the citizens of this country who they consider not to be their supporters. How do you, how do you address this particular? Well, first of all, matter? one has to recognize that the government has a strategy. Its strategy is to violate the law. The, its strategy is to undermine democracy. The law is clear. The ARIO is the clerk of the council and a servant of the council. What the government does through the minister is in violation of law, gives the REO them instructions that are not in keeping with the law. The, the, the REOs now find themselves in a position where the law says one thing, but they're being instructed to do something else, and they tend to go with that. Then. The government has as a backup the use of the Guyana police force. Like in the case of Linden, let's not meet yet there. The, the regional authorities in Linden sat with the police and agreed where the, the, the Mash Trump route will go and where it will end. On the instruction of the minister, they proceeded to change that while it was advertised and everybody knew they was going. So you're also seeing an element of political disruption. Because obviously they knew if they wanted to think they had more than a week, more than two weeks, they could have said it, but they wait until yesterday, or I think day before yesterday, to say the route must change. And they say it must change from Bayrock because there is construction there. But the, very, the PPP government had activities at Bayrock while there is con construction. So you know clearly it's political. They are not be believers in the law, and they're using the REOs to undermine the elected council. The behavior of Gadraj is a manifestation of this culture that the PPP is encouraging. And therefore, like I know the region has agreed, we need to have the issues we want dealt with by the council. The council vote on it. And then we take the requisite action to ensure that the Tom Clark, no, sorry, in this case, Clark. the REO, well, I, Tom Clark, Clark, they do the Clark same with the Tom Clark. But in this case, the REO, 
should be made to comply with the with the decisions of the council. Any other thing is illegal. And so once it's a decision of council, I believe it can be taken to court and the matter be dealt with in the court because clearly Daramalal is not somebody who even understands democracy. All he knows is this is the PPP agenda and he's going full ahead with that. And that is what we need to confront. Feeling protected and insulated from any negative consequences yeah. for his actions. I want to take you to a place now where the People's National Congress is clearly under attack. Attacked by the People's Progressive Party and their rogue elements. Recently, and we have some photographs and some, um, a bit of video footage which we pull up as we have this, this discussion. Recently, attempts were made to take possession of the party office of letter. Those attempts failed. And then, a week or so later, agents of the PPP came at midnight or, there or after midnight. Like thieves, broke in to the party's office, took off the roof, removed all doors, windows, ceilings, literally destroyed that place. The intention, it seems, is bigger than just possession of a building. This that you're seeing here, sir, is a very short video of what was left behind. The photographs of the founder leader, reports I received were that people literally put the founder leader's picture on the floor and stood on it, the contract of somebody um, whose name I don't now recall. The contractor stood on the image of the founder leader, Mr. Burnham, and, and had a good laugh over it. So this is bigger than just demolition for a purpose of occupation. Your opening thoughts on it's, this? Particular again, it's political. It's disrespectful. Now, let me give a background as far as I know. Since I am leader of the party, they wrote us saying that the property was theirs. We had our lawyer respond establishing that we have been in possession of this building since the 70s and it's our building, our property. Now this government was in power 23 years before and they never sought to take that building. But suddenly they emerge and want to take the building. I know they are concerned about the political work we are doing in Region 9. I think it's an attempt to remove any signs of the APNU, AFC, PNC in Region 9. And so that probably explained why they were fighting to paint it in white quickly. So it's, 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 it's a clear attack. Secondly, like I've seen Manza, MP Walton and others identify, if you need possession of this building, you have to go to court, it's a legal matter. And so we've responded saying to them it's ours. If they are believers in the law, then they will file action in the court and we will respond and the matter will be dealt with as a legal issue. But they do not want a legal issue because they know they will lose in a legal issue um, once the law prevails. So what they're doing, you must see this in a wider context, the Jack Dio and the PPP are seeking to increase the tensions in the society with the hope that there's going to be ethnic confrontation and that as they lose some support from their own base, they are hoping that that will galvanize the indo guyanese community towards them. You know, one of the realities... The indigenous Guyanese community? The, in, the indigenous, the indo guyanese community, all of them. In this case, is the indigenous community. Now, if you, if you follow what is happening, you will see it's a clear attempt to incite ethnic tension. And therefore, when we look at something like this, we have to look at it in the context of what the government sets out to do. And Jack Deo and the PPP 
set out to destroy the PNC. That is what they set out to do. Now, I noted that he said that if the PNC wants land, they should apply for land. In that very statement, he's bringing out the political vindictiveness of the PPP. Because if you want a health center, you have land. You have land. Yeah. So it is not an issue of land. Because Jack Leo, in speaking, he's so powerful in his mind that he talks things that contradict what he's saying. If the issue was land, the government has access to land all over the Rupununi and all over the country. And so it is clearly political. It is clearly aimed at disrupting before the local government election, and it is clearly aimed at ensuring that there is confrontation and tensions raised in the society. I was also going to the point that in PPP strongholds, point that in PPP strongholds, people are complaining. Cars in the areas, those close to the areas, those close to the party are taking advantage of them. And as this happened, being alienated from the PPP, alienated from the PPP, and the way they see themselves regaining the supporters is by, is by pushing for a conflict with the PNC in which there is ethnic confrontation, and then they will do like they did in 1997, claim that it was TOG, that it was TOGs, and they use it to rally their support base against the African Guyanese community. While we will take on the PPP, we are very conscious of what they set out to do. And we will take them on, note, try, seeking as much as possible to ensure that that doesn't happen. I, 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 if you look at the protest for the Quindon backers, they were very quick to put people in the protest to create problems and then start to describe the protesters as hooligans. And now they've gone to the extreme of char charging them for terrorism. So you could see it's a political plot that is emerging. There's another face, there's another side to what's happening in Letem. The coalition has gr gained ground in Letem, electoral ground. Yeah. The coalition has done significant work in the Rupununi, yeah. in Region 9. And persons have been gravitating to the coalition. So among the first actions taken by the People's Progressive Party after August um, 2020 was to violate the procurement legislation and pay in advance for large numbers. So among the first actions taken by the People's Progressive Party after August um, 2020 was to violate the procurement legislation and pay in advance for a large number. Clearly that did not work. They're still being rejected. And so they went and they sold carbon credits. And then they took money from the carbon credits and they offered 15% crumbs to the indigenous peoples. And that has been rejected as well. So the PPP finds itself rejected on both fronts when they try to convince the indigenous peoples to join them. So this other side of the equation clearly is one where the PPP has decided that they're going to beat up on the PNC and signal to the indigenous peoples that they can beat up the PNC and therefore they shouldn't bother with the PNC. And so it was Machiavelli who wrote that it is better to be feared than love if you cannot be both. So this is clearly the objective of the People's Progressive Party. What message do you therefore have for supporters across the country and in particular in Region 9? First of all, we know that the strategy is to instill fear. Our message to them is to stand up, stay firm, let us continue to expose the PPP. The PPP is on a mode, in a mode of self-destruction, and we shouldn't be provoked, though we should need to be proactive in taking on the People's Progressive Party. Now, the People's Progressive Party recognizes that it is losing ground. And that is why when I saw Jack Dio talking about taking back the extra time that we lost 
apart from the fact that it's legal stupidity, because the Constitution says that five years after the first sitting of the National Assembly, the, the Parliament stand dissolves and there will be elections. I don't know how he's taking it back. But what I want to say to our supporters, don't be carried away by that. What he's trying to suggest is we want to be there long. I believe this is a ploy to let us not focus on preparing for elections and then they will seek to call elections early next year. So I would say to people, be focused. Don't be carried away by statements. If you look at what they're doing at the level of the Elections Commission, you will see that they are preparing for gen election. general elections. And so this is really to browbeat people. Our supporters need to continue to organize, mobilize the base. And stay focused. Stay focused yeah. and let us prepare to do what is required to ensure we see the back of the People's Progressive Party. That should be our focus. I want to, show, oh, I want to make yeah. one last point. Sure. If you saw the picture of the persons in the office of the, in the Rupanu, you will see a lot of indigenous people. Of course. Which suggests that they haven't been successful in, in, in instilling in fear in all. Yeah. They might have in some. Yeah. It is just like the 50, just like the, the 10 days workers. I saw them posing up with the 10 day workers. They having instructed them, having instructed them to go. So they're putting up these pictures like if they're getting the support of these people. When in fact they're playing games, Mashramani should have given you an indication of how the PPP operated. They've sent out instructions saying, if you didn't participate in Mashramani, you will go home. I know for sure that was said in the Ministry of Youth, Sport and Culture. And when you look at Mashramani, only one ethnic group Participated. participated yeah. And so you see what they are up to. They instill fear, but they obviously said to their supporters, you don't have to go. This is, was intended for the other people. The other people. Yeah. I, I want to assure you that based on feedback, and I'm very close to the ground in, in, in the Rupununi, indigenous people are angry at what happened. That building represented a beacon of hope for people who have lost and continue to lose hope in, in what's happening in our country. That building was painted in the colors of the People's National Congress reform, and it has since been painted over in white by the invaders. But I want to show you, oh, by the way, before I go to this, if you notice in those still photographs we showed a minute ago, that fuels anger as well because little story books for children were destroyed and thrown in the garbage and set alight. They had 11 barrels, 11 of, barrels of, of food of, and clothing. Uh, other things that we were to give to the people yeah. in the Rupununi. Yeah. And I think they know that those things went in. And, and they, they stole them. They stole them. And we expect the police to deal with it because that is a crime. But it's difficult to expect the police to deal with it when the man who led the invasion on behalf of the police is the man who was taking the report from Carl Singh, the REO for the PPP. Yeah. But I want to know... And it's also important to note that the very Carl Singh was accused of shooting... Well, I want to come to that. Okay. I want to come to that, but I want to leave that back for just a little bit more. Mm. I want to show you a building on the Esquibo coast. This building houses the People's Progressive Party office. It sits in the middle of a government compound. A government compound, that entire compound at least used to be owned by the government of Guyana and housed a lot of government buildings and offices mm -hmm. and residences as well. I know the building. And the PPP has taken this plot of land and they've put up this structure while they were in government. I believe this structure may have gone up sometime in 2010 or somewhere around then. But the PPP has not said how and by what means they have given themselves title to this building, to the land on which this building I, is? Let me tell you. One second. Mm. And in addition to that, at Leonora, on the west coast of Demerara, that government compound that houses the NIS, the hospital, the, the um, GTT, um, the police station and police houses, commander's home and all that, 
There's a plot of land that was given to Julius Faber in that compound, Julius Faber, while he was chairman of the region, the RDC. How and by what means did the PPP arrive at a place where a private citizen can own land in a government compound? And how can they, as a political organization, do the same on the Essequibo? Um, like I said, the PPP has no respect for law. They have no interest in democracy. They are all about control and domination. Now, the PPP seem to believe that we are not entitled to property. I noticed today they are carrying that we got a lease for the Agricola yeah. lands. Yeah. Like any institution, like any Guyanese, and the same we, way they took Red House. we are entitled to have land. Yeah. The PPP seems to have this approach that PNC and their supporters must not access land. Remember years ago they said who controls the land controls the country. Yeah. And so they seem to want to take away all the lands. We have a situation where a businessman got land on Mandela Avenue. When they came to power, they threatened that businessman and, and took away lands and now we see PPP persons put up business on those lands. So they clearly have a policy of seeking to destroy people who do not support them. We are entitled to land, and that agreement with Agricola and the city council is a legal agreement, just like any legal agreement the People's Progressive Party have. And they have no moral right to speak because they give away land across this country to whoever they want. So I want it to be made very clear. All the lands that we acquire legally and we have been in possession in over the years, we will defend that they are ours. Yeah, and the big criticism is that the Agricola lands were leased at a rate of $20,000 per year for 99 years, and they have arrogated them to themselves a lease for Red House of $12,000 a year for, 20, for 99 years. So, yeah, so where, where's the argument? They are, you know? In fact, we are paying more than them. Of course we But are. you see, they have this view that they can do what they like and that anybody else shouldn't. And that is the arrogance of Jack Dew and the PPP. And another dimension to this let them issue. Carl Singh's father worked in the PNC office at Let Them. Yeah, I know that. Carl Singh's father was a part of the PNC mach political machinery. Carl Singh as a child might, might have been around there too. Yeah. And so he, obviously there's some kind of hate that drives him um, to do what he's doing. And Is it hate or the fact that the PVP got to protect him from his illegalities? Well, well hate drives him and he is evidently uh, motivated by the fact that he was protected having shot an indigenous woman. woman correct. And um, he... You see, the PPP has this way of utilizing people... Who, who they protected. No, not only who they were protected, who there is a matter in the court or there is an illegality so that they can use it as swords of Damocles. The PPP, in a structured way, seek to find out all that they could find on people. In my case, I think, I know that they sh sh went through everything in every ministry that I was, but they haven't found anything. So they have taken to scandaling me. But it's the way the PPP operates, and we need to be focused. Our people need to continue to operate within the law, and let us fight for the things that are legally ours. Viewers, you will recall the Mocha is incident where a policeman who was before the court for a criminal offense is alleged to have taken a baton and hit a woman while she lay helpless in the mud. Soon after that incident, or that alleged incident, the charges against the policeman were dismissed. Missed, yeah. and, and this, you're seeing again the Carl Singh issue. This is an indigenous woman who was shot and who um, Medic, who had to seek medical attention in neighboring Brazil because the quality of our health care in Lethem was inadequate to take care of her. And all of a sudden, dark hands moved behind the scene and she decided she wanted no legal issue with this matter. And so, Carl Singh 
lives to fight another day and to oppress the people of the region in the name of the PPP. Yep, but here's yep, what's No, 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 but it's important for us to know the PPP strategy. The PPP always engage shady characters. If you look at their operatives in Buxton, you will see uh, what we're talking about. In Linden, there was one who's wanted by the law by them. Yeah. And they forget everything about that. You see, Jack Dale is of the view that once he has something on you, you're obligated to him. You had the case where they're trying to yep. put something on you and when they recognized that they couldn't, they backed, they, off. they backed off. So they are uncivilized people in some regard. They don't find themselves on the side of the law. They look for the lawbreakers, protect the lawbreakers so they can use the lawbreakers to achieve their objectives. Now here's what's interesting. Viewers, you tune to Nation Watch. My name is Marvin Williams. I'm your host, your guest, you know. Mr. Aubrey C. Norton, leader of the opposition, leader of the People's National Congress Reform, and we are discussing the, some of the excesses of the PPP's dictatorship in Guyana. Jack Dio issued a statement that said he, this is the final bit on let him, he did not order the possession of the building to be taken, let them build it to be taken by PPP operatives. He didn't order it. His government didn't order it. It was the RU acting on his own. But then you saw a statement soon after being released by Dharam Lal, who said, we will, not be, we will not be bullied. So it is apparent that it was Dharam Lal who issued on behalf of the PPP the instruction. And Jagdeo decided to throw um, the Carl Singh and, and under and the, the bus, bus, having regard to his known character and mm -hmm. shooting of a female and, and mm -hmm. all these things, he, it's okay, he can go, we can, get, we, we can dispose of him, he's mm -hmm. bad news for us. But then Dharmlal spoils the play. What does this tell us as first a nation of all, about the PPP? First of all, let me say this. Baraj Agdo is a Gobelian Hitlerite propagandist who is a threat to peace, stability and a barefaced liar and incompetent racist. I'm saying this because he made a number of allegations against us, which I want to deal with. Yes. First, he argued that the APN, UFC, and PNC are incompetent. There is no body in which the evidence establish incompetence more than Barra Jack Dale. He has the failed Skeldon project. He virtually bankrupted NIS. He produced the failed and more factory. You had a charity wharf that was sailing away. A failed fiber optic cable prop um, that cost us millions. When it comes to scams, he had the law book scam. He had the dolphin, dolphin scam. The FIP Motilal and Malio Road scam, the fertilizer scam. If we just sit down and talk about the scams and illegalities on the Jack Dale, two things will come out. One, he's incompetent because he failed, and two, corruption reigned while he was head. So we need to be make it very clear that as far as the evidence suggests, Jack Doe is corrupt and incompetent. He, 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 he says then that the PNC is the most racist party. And I was like, Jack Doe is saying this? A man who, under whom more than a thousand African Guyanese were executed? A man under whom they fire African Guyanese public servants as they like? A man under whom African Guyanese could have could hardly get a contract. And we're not qualified to hold international and, uh, and we, Roger Luncheon, made it clear that there was no qualified black to be an ambassador. Are you serious? Baraj Agdeo has no moral right to speak about anything about racism. And it is reported by some, and they allege that he told them he's going to destroy the African Guyanese community. So we have to be on alert. May I also point out 
that under the PNC, Indians got contracts. The records will show they had many contracts. And Dagdio got scholarship. Well, I want word Dagdio scholarship because I don't know how much he learned academically. Do I know he learned to political wheel and deal? So, but the, the, the point is here, he has no right to speak moral or otherwise. He has been the most racist president in this country, and he continues to be a fueler of race. He went on to say that Burnham was CIA and Burnham should be tried for treason. Let me say this to you, Jack Dale. The Soviet Union financed the PPP. There is a document that will show Dr. Jagon asks Czechoslovakia for money. And we know full well the only difference between what they're saying, and I don't know that Burnham, the documents said that Burnham took money from them. That is what he put into it. But we know that the PPP was financed by the Russians, then Soviet. And so if Burnham committed treason, so did Jack Dale. And then we turn to Sugate. But before you get no, to Sugate. No, let's go to Sugate. Let's go to Sugate. Here is a man that there is serious allegation of corruption, yeah. treason, rob the people of this country. And then they turn around and prevent investigations. What Jack Dale is trying to do is to blame people before the blame is thrown at him. He knows full well that he's corrupt. He knows full well he's incompetent. He knows full well he is racist. He knows full well that the things he, he is doing will promote ethnic tension. tension. And so he proceeded to say that we are talking about Burnham because there is a crisis in leadership in the PNC. He knows full well this is the centenary of Forbes Burnham, and therefore we are obligated to honor Forbes Burnham, and we're doing that. And who speak about the dead, the, uh, Dr. Jagon, more than the PPP? Uh, than Jack Dale. Whenever he was in trouble, he went straight back to Babu John. To Babu John, and made a racial presentation with the hope of whipping up that kind of support. So the man is a bare-faced hypocrite. In his own party, he talking about crisis and leadership. We manage whatever crisis we, will, we have. In all political parties, there are differences. But what did he do? He, I believe he contributed in some regard by his actions to the death of Navin Chandra Paul. He treated Navin Chandra Paul in a very terrible way. He didn't seek no attempt to negotiate or to find solutions to his internal crisis. He expelled Ramjitan and Moses. He has no moral right. He has no right to speak. Jack Doe is an incompetent dictator who resorts to whatever power he has to achieve his objectives. He should mind his own business or shut up because he comes into the PNC business to detract. If he was a leader, that wanted to manage leaders, he would not have transformed Irfan Ali into a puppet. Why isn't Irfan Ali doing the press conferences? Why he has to do them? I mean, this man is the vice president. But he speaks more on the critical issues than the president. And, and the then, prime minister put and, together. And the prime minister. And then talking about, about others. Barrett Jack Dale, I say this to him again, as he speaks about corruption, I invite him again to take the assets he, he got and put it against his le legitimate earnings. And if they can stand the test of time, I will do whatever it is. This man, who come to Georgetown probably on a bicycle, has amassed the wealth of the people of Guyana and come talking nonsense about corruption and management of leadership. He's not a leader, he's a dictator. Navin Chandapal had secured the most votes in a PPP Congress and ought to have been appointed General Secretary. Between Jagdeo and Ramutar, 
they caused him to stand down while Ramutar held that position and contested the election as presidential candidate. In the last, you know this man talks about democracy. We had more than a thousand people elect our leadership. 35 of them elected... Appointed. Uh, um, <laughs> Irfan Ali, while he had 19 fraud charges. And, and they virtually forced the others out. Why you think like Ramson playing up? He has hopes. And he knows that he has to get the God of the PPP to approve it for him to achieve his objective. I think the earlier Irfan Ali recognizes that he needs to stand up and govern Guyana is the better. Now, the PPP is clearly taking Guyana down the road in the hope of realizing violent conflict. This is, this is very, very clear. They are doing everything to anger one section of Guyana's population. And in fact, that section of Guyana's population is angry. And that section of the population has a component that says, we need to take this thing down a different path. The leadership of the PNC and the, the coalition under um, your hand has been tempering, has been um, sort of cooling the heads of persons who are so disposed. How do you feel about the emotions that are at boiling point? And can you and can the political organization you lead continue to contain our people for very much longer? I don't know what you mean by contain. I think we have to give our people leadership to protest the PPP, which we will do. But we have to be very careful and do it in a way that we don't allow them the opportunity f to it to become an ethnic conflict and the indo guyanese and the afro guyanese are at it. Essentially, the people in this country hope to live in peace. It is the PPP elite and cabal that is running down that road. My guidance to our people is to say we have been mobilizing on the ground. We'll continue to mobilize and there will be an action to bring some senses to the PPP. There are some among us who believe that the only option you have is street protest. Street protest is one option with a lot of dangers. Let us go back to 1997. In 1997, I was general secretary and in charge of what happened. I've seen street protests in 2000 and between 1997 and 2006 up to 2010 and what in essence happens the PPP use that against the PNC they use it against the coalition and it allows them to rally their people we have got to have some alternative approaches that allows us to achieve our objectives while not giving them the opportunity to do what they do I was overseas when the Queen and Bacchus protest was coming down and I called one of the persons there, I said, be very, very careful. At some point, the PPP is going to infiltrate it. My understanding was they have a man paid at Buxton, and that man put some people in it. And when they meet one report, they did some of the things that they did. We have got to give leadership to our people. Let's go back to the... Let's go back to the confrontation at Letem office. I had given clear instruction to them that, look, you will oppose it. You will stay there and protest. But don't get in a physical confrontation with the police. Because what they were planning to do was to get in a physical confrontation. And then they would have dealt with it as a law and order issue. Yes. And so I guided our people. Now, when they recognize that they are not being able to antagonize um, us and get that physical thing. They wait until the dark. And mind you, this thing about dark is the PPP approach. I remember when the three Londoners got killed, I'd advise that once dark set. Clear. Clear. Because the PPP likes to execute people under the cover of dark. And that is what happened in Linden. The PPP came, we had learned that they were coming, they came 
in the dark to move the vendors from New Market Street. New Market Street. So I wasn't surprised that they came in the dark to do what, when they did with Mocker, they went to Mocker in the dark. The PPP is a wicked political party. It is a party that has to operate under the cover of dark. And in strategizing, we have got to take care and understand that they are a dark party that operates under the cover of darkness. On the night of that incident, on the night when they came and, and destroyed that building, I predicted on a, in a Facebook post that bright and early next morning, senior police personnel and government officials will land in Let Them. Robson Ben, Minister of Home Affairs, accompanied by Clifton Hicking, who is the acting commissioner of police, landed there. What do you suppose the intention of that visit was? Well, let us go it this way. The fact that they flew in meant the government knew. Precisely. So all the jack, they were talking about the government and the people and anything to do with it, meant the government knew. Now, I think their strategy was to do what they did, but then disown it. But when Dharam Lal, in his normal youthful exuberance, said what he said, he exposed the tale. So they weren't able now to go through with what they were planning. Now, this whole thing has exposed the PPP. The fact that Jack Deo said people should apply for land means that they have lands that can do what, what they, they want, want and therefore it's just an unnecessary attack. Secondly, the fact that ropes and Ben you know, I want to make the point about the PPP. The PPP is still a communist party when it comes to how they operate. They are a capitalist party when it comes to accumulating wealth. But when it comes to how they operate, they are a communist party. Jack Deo, none of them could have done anything without Jack Deo sanctioning it. I am clear in my head that it was sanctioned by the People's Progressive Party, but they hope to create a plot in a way that it will not look like them. And so when Ropes and Ben and Hicken fl flew in was to give cover to the police with what they did. But then by that time it was exposed. I also sense when I got the call the night, the first thing I said to our people, ensure it is videoed. Well, I said, do start, share it live, but they were having internet problems. So I said, ensure it is videoed. And so they video it. And so it is all out there. You know, the biggest problem the PPP has right now is the way they can be exposed in a way that they, they weren't before 2015. And so they are now battling with their communist approach and this new era of information technology. And that is what is giving them problems. But rope, whenever you see ropes and bend, you know it's an instruction given. There's no evidence that ropes and bend could operate on his own. There's no evidence that the REO operates on his own. So all this thing about Jack, though, but they have nothing to do with it, is just showing you how he lies and how he's barefaced. And in the same breath, tell you you should apply for land. We, we have about 10 minutes remaining. There's this belief that the PPP has lost ground between 2020 elections and now. There's evidence to establish that they have. Corruption, the high cost of living, the involvement of high-level government officials in allegations of corruption, the attitude and disposition of the Speaker of the National Assembly while presiding in the chair, and a number of other bits of evidence present themselves easily. And so there's this belief that the PPP is trying to find a way to distract, particularly the international community, um, the governments and the investors, potential and, and present investors. And so they want this conflict to happen so that they can charge people with treason, put them in prison for life or, you know, some undetermined period of time and so on. And so they can signal to the potential investor and the heavy investor, current investors, 
Now look, this PNC party is not good for investment. Mm -hmm. It damages and destroys the, the investment climate, and therefore, regardless of what the PPP does, you need to prop us up and shore us up and keep us in government at the expense of these other people. Okay. And, and so um, they want desperately, and this is what I believe our viewers need to get, they want desperately a confrontational course so that they can pander to the international community leaders and investors to say this party, the PNC, is bad for investment. Well, yes. Um, I want to start, you know, I was in the Bahamas. Yes. And I'm going to sue the journalists that misinformed. I went to the Bahamas to meet the Prime Minister. The engagement was with the Prime Minister of Bahamas. As I spoke to the journalists, I was speaking to me as leader of the opposition and leader of the PNC, informing the, lead, the Prime Minister of what is happening in Guyana. At no stage did I say to this journalist anything about the chairman of CARICOM. He, in asking, was describing him as the chairman of CARICOM, which he is. And therefore, I can't deprive him of the right to, to do that. But throughout this presentation, I spoke to the Prime Minister. We had a short conversation because I was to meet the uh, earlier day and we had fight problems. And when I arrived, I met him just before I left the country. First of all, he put, they put that we, I complained. I didn't complain. I informed the Prime Minister of what is happening in Guyana, which I have a right to do. The PPP seems to believe that you must not speak to people in the international community. Only of them have the reserve right to do that. My position is simple. We will popularize the atrocities of the PPP in this country, we will speak to CARICOM leaders and for the field. That process will continue because the government doesn't like the facts to be known. They like only their side of the story to be out there. Now, once we are speaking to the leadership in the Caribbean, we began to speak to Caribbean journalists as well. So a lot of the Caribbean is hearing what is happening in Ghana. That is offending them. They don't like that. But what they are not doing is pointing out anything that we said it is, that is untrue. Because all that we're saying is true. Now, as it relates to promoting tension, you mentioned some variables, but there's a key variable I think we need to pay attention to. In virtually every PPP, stronghold that you go to. The complaint is that there is some PPP person who is monopolizing all the resources, treating people with disdain. It happened when I was in Kanji. It happens when I was in um, Bushlot. Um, I was at Ford Ordinance too. On all of these occasions, there were complaints about this little group in the PPP that monopolize things and treat people as they like. And that is backfiring. You see what happened recently in Rose Hall. Yeah. And so on the quarantine, people are recognizing that in terms of drainage and irrigation, we did a better job than them. They recognize that we handle rice better than them. Well, I sense they know that they now fool them about sugar and that sugar is a disaster. So what they're doing is now coming into African Guyanese communities with the, with the people they're paying, etc. Bring them, take pictures with them, and put it up as if, and they're telling Caribbean leaders that they're making inroads into the African Guyanese community. It is therefore our task to expose what they're doing and let the entire Caribbean know what they're doing. And at the same time, we need to take action to ensure that they don't lead us down the road of a physical ethnic conflict. Because like we've said, that is what they want, that is what they have avoided. But we can protest the PPP without that approach that will allow them to achieve the objectives that they want to achieve. Finally, Mr. Norton, what is your message to 
investors and potential investors, particularly in our oil sector, oil and gas sector, and what by extension is your message to foreign governments with respect to where we are as a nation and what the excesses of the PVP are targeting, what they hope to achieve, and what is your party's position on this? First of all, we have a history of encouraging investment. Outside of the period, essentially, when the PPP and the PNC, well, the P PNC was considered socialist. They were communists and they had well, other state enterprises. It was Desmond Hoy who liberalized this economy. It was Desmond Hoy who got rid of most of the state entities. In fact, when the PPP came, they kept the state entities, Guy Suko, um, GPL, etc. So we have a better record than them when it comes to private investment. And I would say to people, it is we who brought Umay, Barama, you can name them. GTT. GTT, you can name them. So we did that. Secondly, I would say to them, we have always been open to the private sector and willing to engage them. When we were in government, we engaged ExxonMobil and there was an agreement. Some are criticizing it. Even the people who was critical of it now seem to be the best person it seems to be the best thing for them. What I would say to the investors is under the AP and UAFC and, and PNC, they will always be welcome and that we believe investment plays a critical role in Ghana. However, everything we'll do, we will do it within the confines of the law to ensure that our people are respected, law is maintained, and we can promise them there will be no vice news disclosures and that kind of illegalities that affect investment. In fact, I would say to the, to, to the governments that to the extent you could have had an expose like happened with vice news and Sue, and nothing was done by the Ghana police force says that the rule of law has been undermined, and they should worry about the PPP because they are eroding democracy, they are eroding the rule of law, and they are not focused on the development of Guyana, they are focused on themselves. And I would say to them, we as a political party will be people-centered, we will focus on our people, and utilize the resources of oil and gas to ensure our people benefit, and we improve the quality of their life, widen the middle class and improve people's life generally and that is what I think any government should be doing but the PP cannot do that. Prosperity for all. Correct. Under a future government led by the coalition and the People's National Congress reform. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for joining and staying with us. Mr. Norton, I'd like to thank you very much. Thanks for, for having me. With your presence and once again, as we take our leave today, you can hear the drums in the background. Ghana Day celebrations are on at Congress Place to Fire. And you are welcome. You are only required to deposit a small contribution of $500 at the gate as you enter. And it's a wonderful experience. But I think you should also mention that it is not a PNC activity. No, it's not. It's a Ghana Day committee, right. but we facilitate them with the use of the, the place. The use of the facility. Yeah. So it's happening here, um, having been organized by the Ghana Day um, committee. So, and uh, before I go as well, I'd like to again extend best wishes to all Guyanese, and in particular our Hindu brothers and sisters, for a safe and respectful observance and celebration of Pagua 2023. May God bless you until we meet again. Be good to yourselves. <laughs>